About 30 minutes ago, these two aircraft flying piggyback, locked together, took off from Edwards Air Force Base to make a little bit of aviation history. Perhaps this mission is not as exciting as putting a man on the moon, but potentially it's more important. It's one step toward creating a fleet of reusable vehicles that will make frequent round trips into space. What you're seeing right now, high above California's Mojave Desert, is a space-age marriage of convenience. A space shuttle mated to a jumbo jet, but not for long. And here's where the drama of the mission becomes apparent. In about 15 minutes, with two astronauts in the cockpit, the shuttle will blast free from its perch atop the 747 and will fly on its own and land on its own for the very first time. The Enterprise is part rocket ship and part glider. Soon it will be capable of rocketing into space, but won't today. Today it will glide 33 miles to its touchdown at a point directly behind us about a mile away or less. We said glide, and glide it will. There are no engines on board the Enterprise. It is a 150,000-pound glider. It will have one chance at a safe landing, and only one chance. This is a CBS News special report. Space Shuttle, the first voyage. This portion is sponsored by Polaroid's SX-70 system for sharp, clear, instant color. Polaroid's SX-70 Alpha-1, the only camera of its kind in the world. Focus and frame. Close-ups, time exposures, backlight, the SX-70 system will work out virtually any picture you want automatically. Sharp, clear SX-70 colors come up in minutes, and the picture you want is yours. Polaroid's SX-70, the only folding single-lens reflex camera in the world. Real cool, that old-fashioned bathing suit, Grandpa. I'd feel cooler with some good old-fashioned lemonade. Country time, Grandpa? Country time. Country time lemonade flavor drink mix, eh? Natural lemon flavor. Mmm, not too tart, not too sweet. That's the taste of good old-fashioned lemonade. Well, you ought to know. <laughs> <laughs> country time, country time. Tastes like that good old-fashioned lemonade. Here again is Morton Dean. Good morning, and it is a beautiful morning out here on the Mojave Desert where Edwards Air Force Base is located. The searing desert temperatures have not arrived as yet. It's about 80 degrees. There are some puffy and stretched out clouds in the sky, but nothing that will or is expected to obliterate our view or is expected to endanger this flight in any way. Let's take a look right now at an artist's conception of what we'll be seeing in real life in just a few minutes from now. This is what the separation is expected to look like. The shuttle on top of the 747 flying at about 21,700 feet and popping off the top of the 747 like a cork popping out of a bottle of champagne. The 747 will roll left and down, and the shuttle will roll to the right as the two spacecraft, or aircraft rather, try to separate and get out of each other's way. With me today is a uh, familiar face to all of you, I'm sure. Leo Krupp has been a, an advisor to CBS News ever since the beginning of manned space flight. And Leo, that may make you sound a bit old, but it's been a short season and we were all around back then. And Leo has also uh, been around since the beginning of uh, tests and uh, when first they began to analyze this space shuttle. He's a research pilot for Rockwell International, the people who have uh, constructed this shuttle. And I bet, Leo, you've been in simulators on simulated flights as often as the astronauts have. And my question is, some people say the shuttle will fly like a rock, and others say it's going to fly something like a DC-9. What's your view? It's going to fly like a conventional airplane, Martin. We look forward to a very successful flight, and it uh, should be no problem at all. The airplane should come down good control, just like an airliner, and he should make a good landing in his program landing touchdown area. I think we ought to remind our audience there are, or will be, 51 engines on board when the shuttle goes into space. It is not going into space today, and it has no engines. It is flying like a glider. The shuttle is called the Enterprise, and it's named after the spaceship on that popular television show, Star Trek. 
in the Enterprise today, there are two astronauts, not uh, Captain Kirk or Mr. Spock, but Fred Hayes and Gordon Fullerton. Both are experienced test pilots. Fullerton hasn't been in space before, but Hayes has been there aboard the trouble-plagued Apollo, which didn't make it to the moon and almost didn't make it back to Earth. Richard Wagner takes a look at what the astronauts did earlier this morning and at some of the things that are going on here today at Edwards Air Force Base. The early morning activities of astronauts have become as familiar to us as the rituals of actors preparing for the first curtain. Fred Hayes and Gordon Fullerton did not disappoint the groundlings this morning. As always, there was the obligatory breakfast before the cameras. It seems to comfort us that our spacemen go about their lofty calling undisturbed by the pangs of hunger. After the juice, steak and eggs, and coffee, the astronauts moved on to scene two, shaking hands and waving in the pre-dawn darkness okay, before proceeding again. on to the Enterprise. The improbable combination has proven it can fly in the mated configuration. Hayes and Fullerton, hard-hatted against any last-minute unprogrammed incident, climbed up toward their orbiter to find out if it can fly as well alone. Shortly thereafter, as the sun came up, some of the thousands of spectators, many of whom spent the night here, got themselves ready to watch the flight. They're being kept a couple of miles away from the flight line, but a variety of optical aids among the spectators should assure them a good view of the proceedings. Looking directly into the morning sun, however, won't help. A better view will be had by an assortment of celebrities clustered in tents down by the runway where the Enterprise is to set down. There are singers, actors, and a variety of politicians, among them California's governor, Jerry Brown. Brown asked if his recent espousal of the space program didn't mark an end to his espousal of the era of limits, didn't think so. No, it's uh, marking an evolution of the era of limits. The planet is limited, and that's uh, why it's so important that we expand beyond. The Space Shuttle Enterprise is, of course, named for the Starship Enterprise in the television series Star Trek. Dedicated Trekkies among the spectators here kept looking for Mr. Spock or Captain Kirk. But if they're here, they're keeping a low profile. Richard Wagner, CBS News, Edwards Air Force Base. And those... Uh... Those are the airplanes. That's the shuttle sitting atop the 747. The 150,000 pound shuttle will lift off from that 747 in approximately eight minutes from now. There are two men on board the Enterprise and the 747 is a crew of four. All are wearing parachutes and oxygen masks for this very first, uh, very first special flight. The first time that the shuttle will fly free. Our coverage of the first voyage of Enterprise will continue in a moment. It's here, the simplest camera ever invented. Not yet. Polaroid's new one step, because you never focus. The only thing you touch is one button. Now. The motor hands you the picture, and the SX-70 color develops in minutes. Polaroid's new little one step, you never focus. All you touch is the button. It's only $39.95, motor and all. Remember our first kiss? And my parents, Fred Porch. You, me, the moonlight, and your dad. Even if you wear dentures, keep every kiss special like the first with today's anti-odor Polydent. Polydent's exclusive formula contains two hard-working cleaning actions. Chemical action to help power away even tough stains, plus physical action to fight odor-causing film. Two hard-working cleaning actions in anti-odor Polydent. Coast is clear. Polydent. We want you to stay close. Right in the camera. Oh. Hey there, bright eyes. Maybe you need a night tall last mm. night. Oh. Maybe you had trouble falling asleep. Well, that's what night tall's all mm. about. On those occasional nights when you do have trouble, night tall can help make you drowsy so you can fall asleep. Come on, America. Ah. Stop yawning. For occasional sleeplessness, remember, night tall. Mm. Simplest camera ever invented. Polaroid's new one step. You don't have to focus or anything here. I'm not very good at this. It's just one step. Point it and press the button. That's two steps. We don't count the pointing. The motor hands you the picture. The SX-70 color develops in minutes. 
And it's only $39.95. It's beautiful, but I still think pointing's a step. Well, it isn't. Well, it should be. We don't count it. You should. We're just about five and a half minutes away from separation, and everything is going according to plan. Everything looks uh, just beautiful here uh, at Edwards Air Force Base and over the Air Force Base. This is a rather unusual picture for us. We've seen this combination fly on three previous occasions, but as we said earlier, this will be the first time that the shuttle will fly free. But piggyback uh, aircraft uh, have been seen before in World War I. The British tried to stop the German Zeppelins with a piggyback aircraft. In World War II, the Germans tried to stop the Allies. France and the Soviet Union have experience with piggyback aircraft. And the United States had a piggy belly aircraft a few years ago with the carrying of another aircraft in the belly or bomb bay. Of, a, uh, of an airplane, but nothing quite like this, nothing as large, nor uh, carrying anything that was intended to go into space. Well, we've been talking about the past, and we've been reporting on what the shuttle is doing today and will be doing this morning, and now Steve Young reports about what the shuttle is expected to do in the not-too-distant future. The space shuttle will be launched from the Kennedy Space Center by three rockets beefed up by two larger ones strapped to its side. When their fuel is burned up, the big rockets will be parachuted back for reuse. Shuttle will continue its powered flight using the three smaller engines. Before it reaches orbit, the belly fuel tank will be cast away and will burn up in its fall back to Earth, the only major part that doesn't get recycled. At this point, shuttle looks like an airplane, but in space, its wings have no function. There's no air hundreds of miles above Earth, so it will be flown like a spacecraft. Most of the orbit changes will be controlled by small rocket thrusters, much like those in the Apollo lunar program. During the free flight drops from the 747 jetliner, the space shuttle flies at about 300 miles an hour. In space, shuttle and its crew speed along at about 17,000 miles an hour. Comparing the cargo space in present rockets to the orbiter's big bay is like comparing a guppy with a whale. The hold is 60 feet long, 15 feet wide, big enough for a 65,000-pound payload. And all of it can be exposed to space by swinging open huge doors. Shuttle can perform many missions. It can carry aloft a manned space lab, bring up new satellites, and bring old ones back to Earth for repairs. The space agency says it expects each shuttle to provide versatility, low cost, and a lifetime of about 100 missions. Leo Krupp, we're about uh, three minutes away from that separation. What is Fred Hayes and Gordon Fullerton, too, in the shuttle going to feel when that shuttle suddenly lifts off from the 747? Well, they'll feel a, an acceleration because they will get a, about a three-quarters of a G increase in acceleration. And also, Fred will be holding in a two-degree nose-up pitch command, so the orbiter will start its pitch up, and as soon as he can, he'll, he'll roll right to make a good separation clearance so he can start pushing over and doing his flight test plan. Leo, I think the other night you said it much more colorfully when we were talking at dinner when you said that it'll feel like uh, getting hit in the rump with a baseball bat, and you even embellished a little bit on that. So there, there will be a jolt when they blast free. Uh, They'll definitely feel a, a thump and in an in increase in acceleration. Once it is free, uh, it will okay, fly about... Four minute hack. Two, one, mark. Okay, that's about four minutes then to, uh, to separation. Once uh, the aircraft do separate, the shuttle has about a 33-mile long course to run. It should take about five minutes and 10 seconds. 